bat, and he skies the first pitch he sees behind to him plate out of play to go 0 and 1. When Tyler Hartman is locked in, it is a scary thing to see, and we haven't really seen it to this level at this point until this week for the Patriots. 0 1 to Hartman. Swing and a miss. It's 0 and 2. Three straight games with a home run for Tyler Hardman. And all clutch homers after he had the grand slam, a go-ahead grand slam on Thursday. His two-run homer last night solidifying the Patriots in the lead. And today, as the 0-2 is upstairs, adding to a one-run lead in the first, but it's since been tied. Already 10 homers in 36 games for Hardman after he hit 22 in 111 last season. A 1-2 to Hardman, swings and misses over the breaking ball from Lou, and there's one retired. Talk about how locked in he is, too. The Yankees minor league hitting coordinator, Joe Migliaccio, actually tweeted that 111.5 mile per hour exit velocity on the homer in the first inning was a PR. And for a guy that is literally known for hitting the ball hard, that is pretty impressive that that was his hardest hit home run. And you could see it right off the bat that that was just a dart, no doubter of a home run. Battling the wind is the first pitch to Caleb Durbin, breaking ball driven through the left side of the infield for a base hit. And Durbin stays red hot after a two-hit game, including his first of the season, first homer of the season last night. There's a whole lot of speed on first base for Anthony Siegler. 26 stolen bases worth of speed for Durbin. That ranks 10th among all minor league players at all levels of baseball. He's already got 11 as a Patriot and helped the Patriots use a six-run first inning yesterday by getting his 11th steal of the season. Anthony Siegler in from the left side. Dancing off first, Durbin. First pitch to Siegler in the dirt. Blocked by Marrero behind home plate. Since coming up from high A, Durbin continuing to make the wheels on the bus go round on the base pass for Somerset. As you mentioned, since the promotion, 11 stolen bases in 18 games as Siegler takes a fastball down the heart of the plate for a called strike. In Hudson Valley, 15 stolen bases in 16 attempts for Durbin. Coming up from high A just over two weeks ago. 1-1 one, one pitch to Seagler's foul back. And by the way, down in high A, tonight the Hudson Valley Renegades playing as the Hudson Valley Cider Donuts. And seeing on social media, they've got a whole lot of cider donut promotions, food items, at the ballpark, merchandise that smells like cider donuts. One, two to Siegler. Swings and just able to get a piece on that one to stay alive. Our own at the Somerset Patriots front office, Stephen Goldsmith, during the off season when this theme was announced, he actually ordered some cider donuts merchandise from the, the Renegades. And one of the coolest things I thought is that they package up the merch in a donut box, a mini donut box that would usually come with six donuts. So. Just a really great piece of branding there. One, two. Siegler ropes it into left center field. That one's going to get down. Durbin around second. A hard turn. Back pick at second by Rafaela, but he'll stay right there. Anthony Siegler with it in three straight. And there's runners on first and second for Jason Rosario with one out. And I said that the merchandise smells like cider donuts for the Renegades because it literally does. They have scented merch as it looks like we're going to get a mound visit from Eli Marrero. Now the infield for the Sea Dogs getting in on the action as well as a pair of coaches, including the translator. For Lou on the mound. But all the merchandise that's sold with the Renegades in their cider promotion smells literally like they sent it to be like the cider donuts. I don't know how they how they do that. You're checking all the boxes, all, all the five senses. You have the physical 
you're holding like a donut box when you're ordering the merch. You got the scent of a cider donut, which I've never had before. You've never had a cider donut before? I've never had a cider donut before. What I was getting to, though, Jeez. you get to the taste aspect. They have cider donut, I think mac and cheese, yep. cider donut burgers tonight. Durbin dancing off second, trying to catch the eyes of Blue. First pitch to Jason Rosario up and in. We gotta go to Trader Joe's across the street and get you some of their cider donuts. Those are pretty good. Anything from Trader Joe's is good. It's true. It's one to one. Jason Rosario walked his last time to the dish. Siegler off of first, Durbin off of second. With one out, Lou takes a peek over to second, comes home. And it's inside on the curveball to Rosario. It's 2-0. Oh. On the topic of food alternate identities, which is one of our favorite top topics, Eli. It is. The Sea Dogs, I don't know this for sure, I think they might have the most different food identities of any minor league team, unofficially. 2-0 oh, to Rosario, chopped foul towards the on-deck circle. Four of them. They are the Whoopie Pies, the Clam Bakes, the Red Snappers, and the bean suppas. Bean suppas? S-U-P-P-A-H-S. I like the looks of that uniform. I love the whoopie pie uniform. Dancing off second, Durbin. Pitch to Rosario, swing and a miss on the breaking ball. It's two and two. Eric Wagaman waits on deck. They kind of look like the cheesesteak jerseys of the Reading Fight and Phils. Similar look too to the, for the Binghamton Rumble Ponies. They rebrand as the Binghamton Speedies when they have that kind of dinery look. Lou looks over to second. Serves back to Rosario as Durbin dancing off second and a step off the mound and a look towards Durbin. And he gets in your head. I mean, any guy who Steals as many bases, dances off as many bases as Caleb Durbin. As the pitch to Rosario gets a piece of bat on the ball. With 69 stolen bases for Durbin in 162 games in his career to this point. And the amount of moving he does with a big lead, waving his arms, trying to get all the attention he can and get in the pitcher's head. Not an easy thing to look at for any pitcher. Who comes home? Breaking ball to Rosario. Chopped to the second baseman, York, and he's able to throw onto first to get Rosario. That's all he'll get. And there's gonna be two outs with runners on second and third for Eric Wagaman. Wagaman with a strong season in the numbers department. 281 average entering today. An 809 OPS with nine RBI in 63 at bats. That includes three homers. Siegler off of second, Durbin off of third. In a tie ball game, first pitch to Wagaman is a breaking ball low and away. Wagaman spending 17 games with Somerset last year, hitting 340 over that stretch. In addition to a stint on the development list with Somerset, working his way back. 1-0, low and away. Again, it's 2-0 on Wagaman. Aaron Polensky waits on deck with two outs in a tiny ball game here in the bottom of the fourth. All knotted up at two. Wind continues to blow right back towards home plate. As the 2 0 to Wagaman in there for a called strike from Lou on the changeup. And I said before this ball game to you off the air, no one's hit a baseball out tonight. Two Patriots did. It came back to back from Wells and Hardman. 2 1. Just inside. Back to the changeup for Lou. And it's 3 and 1 on Wagaman. In his Patriots career, Wagaman's got a flair for the dramatic. Mm -hmm. Pair of go-ahead homers late last year in a Patriots uniform. 
as the 3-1 is a weak chopper to the shortstop Meyer throwing to his left across the diamond and in time two runners stranded on two singles in the inning for the Patriots as we head to the top of the fifth all knotted up at two on Fox Sports New Jersey. <laughs> 